we're reviewing the uh, Marvel Select thing figure that I just made for a customer. This was a commission piece. Um, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty details of the sculpting and the painting. Uh, before we do that, check out the, um, the like and the subscribe button for the channel. We're going to get more content on tutorials and how to do things um, from sculpting to painting to everything soon. We've already started a couple videos on this of, of the painting process and now we're going to do a review of the figure before it goes out to the customer. So the customer himself, this figure is kind of unique. Uh, the customer who wanted this is an artist himself and his concept after seeing my last spiky thing figure um, that was very true in uh, design to the 1990s Fantastic Four design was that he wanted a crazier and more spiky version of the thing. So after discussing it with him, I had no intentions of ever remaking that figure again. Um, and I really didn't want to make this, but I kind of was intrigued with the complete creative freedom to do it and to do whatever I wanted to do on the project. Um, it's nice working with another artist as your customer because they understand the, you know, the, the process that it takes um, and the work that goes into it. So I started with an Ab Abomination Select figure. Um, the Abomination figure is underneath of all of this, um, except the only other parts that were added are the Thing Hands and Thing Head from the Marvel Select thing. And I wanted to have the scale be all the same. This thing is massive. It's about nine inches tall, um, way bigger than the Marvel Legends thing, which I'm popping in right about here. This is a, a you know a work in progress for something else, but you can see the difference in the scale um, on that. Um, this this idea is that this guy got a third dose, fourth dose of cosmic radiation, and uh, when he got bombarded with cosmic rays again, uh, he mutated it into this version. Um, even bigger, even larger, um, almost Hulk-like um, in his appearance. Um, nothing we've ever seen before in the comics. Complete original design work, um, which I appreciated having that freedom to do. Um, when we look at um, the figure, I'm going to kind of go, I'm going to play with the lighting in here so you can see some of the details when we get to the paint. But when we get to the, the we, what, I, what I basically had to do to get this thing to work is I had to basically take a um, Aves sculpt. Aves epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part compound. Um, you need to mix part A, part B. Once you do that, I used orange. Um, I get an orange um, thing, um, and the orange sculpt basically is is workable for a short period of time, about an hour. Um, I would adhere and smooth out different sections. So if we were to do the neck, I would basically be making a neck and chest area um, that adheres to the figure, and then I would be taking a taking my fingers essentially and making little diamond or pyramid shaped spikes and then sticking them on in different variations. None of these are symmetrical. Um, you can see like it, I have ones curving this way. I have little small spikes here, um, a spike randomly jutting out this way, sharper spikes around the collar of the neck um, and the tops of the arms and then smaller ones as we go. And then uh, giant spikes on the hands and then the legs knees got big spikes um because you know your knee kind of looks like a rounded area so i wanted it to be more pronounced than the rest of the leg as we move in there i went and did a lot of the sculpt work into the toes i had to change out the toes he, uh, the abomination had five toes had to change it make him do four the thing hands were already set but i wanted to add more detail to the thing hands so what I wound up doing is I wanted to retain as much articulation as possible. That's very hard to do with these many spikes. Um, but what I did do to make that work is um, I wanted the head to be able to sit on top of the spikes, but I didn't, there's no reason this thing can't move. So I didn't want it to be able to lean up and back. It just doesn't work because you can't even lean forward with like a, um, a, a chest joint. There's nothing in there for, for like an ab crunch or anything. So it's, you're not gonna like bend them forward and have them look up. So there's, there's no reason to have it up and back tilt, um, but he does have 360 on the head. It's, it's, it's on here by a magnet. It can pop right off um, and it just sits on top with a magnet. It's sturdy, it's not gonna come off or anything. Um, same thing with the hands. The hands are on with magnets. The reason I or did magnets instead of a, a screw is I wanted you to be able to take it off and then repose it whichever way you want to. and. If it has to lean slightly because of the, the way the leg is sitting when you're posing it on a shelf, um, we're, we're going to make it move. 
whichever way we need to. And that might mean tilting it off for a second to re reposition it. Because if we're just trying to go like this on a, on a screw, you're seeing how it's hitting. You're not going to be able to turn the hand. But if I want to do it that way, pop it off and pop it back on. So for the pose, I can with it with large magnets. So the hands are on there by magnets. Um, the waist still moves, the legs still move, the knees still move, the the uh, the feet still move. All of the the regular motion that was there before is is just is still present. The elbows move, the arms move. It's just very limited. So his arm can't go all the way up anymore. Um, kind of nervous about there. We go. That's about it. And the other one on the other side, I, I sculpted more detail on that side in the uh, in the armpit area. So it has less detail. Oh, I'm sorry, it has more detail and less articulation. He can he can get up to about there on that one, but it is what it is. So again, this is a shelf a shelf piece display piece, not something you know that anyone's going to be playing with and wants a ton of articulation. This is this is to go on it on a display. Um, let me readjust this camera. Um, for a higher height. So the waist completely moves around. Um, the sculpt work on the back, the idea was let's continue the asymmetrical design of the, the spikes. We went with a ridge down the middle of the spine and then jutting out spikes flaring from there and then at going up into there. I sculpted upward and I sculpted downward so that I can hide the joints. Um, so if you look here, uh, on the legs, the spikes go up to cover the trunks because if I if I sculpted all inside here, I would wind up with no articulation in that leg whatsoever. So if I went upward with the spike, the the spike details there, and it would um, and it would hide the area of the leg that has less sculpt work, um, so that it still looks great on the shelf, but still retains some articulation. Otherwise, it would be one giant solid piece. It really wouldn't work and it wouldn't be a custom action figure anymore. It would just be a base sculpture. And I did not want to make a sculpture. I don't make sculptures. Um, something I have considered, but nothing I have done so far. So that's that. We'll talk about the paint. So there's a couple paint videos I already have um, on here about how I did stuff with this figure. So I used the orange sculpt, and the orange sculpt wasn't to cheat. The orange sculpt was in case this thing took a header off of a shelf or something, and one of these spikes snapped or, or chipped or something catastrophic happened. Underneath, the, it's still orange base, and it's very similar to the, the base tone that I used, which was this from Citadel. I, had, I primed everything light gray, and, I, and then after the, the light gray primer dried, um, I went over the, it took, it took two or three of these, um, to cover all of this figure with a base. Um, once I covered everything and I had enough, um, had enough coating, um, I was ready to start doing some of the detail work on the, um, the figure. So I went out of order a little bit this time and I actually did the shading first. I used this new Citadel shade, um, this sepia color. Um, I wanted brown because I wanted it to look dirty and I wanted it to tint the orange to look more like an, like an earth tone versus a just orange. I didn't want it to be bright orange. Um, I, I think it would look horrible if it was bright orange. I actually don't like the look of the thing in this bright orange that they made. Um, I actually kind of hate it. So I wanted to make him tone down realistic um, orange and but with brown throughout so the brown of that that um wash that i did of the shade tints the orange slightly but it mainly it sticks and gets into all of these crevices that are in the sculpt work um all i did was use a sculpt tool um to go into all of the crevices and and make everything work and make it look like natural rock the best i possibly could um so you can see all of that brown brings out all the detail in the sculpt work um, and, and it goes into the recesses. Um, there's a video I did completely on how to use that um, shade. So if you're not subscribing to the channel, um, definitely check out that video. Um, it's it's in the uh, the videos, there's a, there's a whole bunch of that I'm gonna do of, of how to base paint, how to use shade, how to use contrast, how to use layering, how to use glazes, all that stuff. Um, so subscribe to the channel, like this video. Um, check out the stuff on the Facebook page and the Instagram page for new stuff that's coming out, including 
um, reviews of, of uh, custom figures when, as I do them. Um, the next thing I did is I wanted to highlight and bring out all of the sculpt work. So all of the tips of everything, I went over with a dry brushing. And I used this desert color. It's a yellowy. It's a goldy, golden yellow. It has a little bit of like a mustard to it. Um, and I brushed over all of the sculpt. Um, so all of the highlights of the sculpt have that yellow over it. As I get closer, you can see um, it, it's all present through the sculpt um, where basically the, the forefront of, of where you're looking at this thing, um, it, it should it should stick out a little bit more than, than the background coloring. It's just painting coloring 101. So I did that through the entire thing. Um, on top of the shading and then I decided I, it wasn't dark enough so when you look in here in the, in the crevices and the grooves you can see there's more color variation um, and the color variation is I went and did a glaze um, I'll do a video on how to do glazes later but what I did is I took this brownish color and I tinted all of the inner parts and the deepest recesses of, uh, and the under part of, of the spikes. Um, anything that would create a shadow, I wanted to create a shadow, a uh, deeper, darker shadow with the paint, um, including around the head area and the collar because his head's sitting on there. Um, and it shows a little darker. And it's not too dark, it's not too different because you're, you know, with a 3D sculpture, um, you're going to see that in natural light. It's going to, it's going to hit the figure in, at different angles. Um, naturally with a 2d drawing, you're going to be shading and doing all the stuff yourself. I just want to help the, the, the eye of the, the viewer catch all of that stuff. And I, I kind of want to bring 2d Marvel art to life here. Um, and that's kind of the point. So all of the shading, all of the stuff is done to help you view the sculpt work and the detail work in, in this um, to make it look better. Um, so then I did a couple more dry brushing and some layers. I threw a little bit of white in there. We, uh, we went with the um, 90s um, darker blue um, so that it stands out a little bit more, makes them look a little bit more ba uh, badass, honestly. The, uh, the light blue with the black belt, um, I, I thought about doing it because I like the classic version. But again, if we're if the concept is, you know, he's wearing this in the 90s when he became spiky um, with the white belt and trim around around here with the blue. This is, again, the concept is he gets hit with more cosmic rays and continues to mutate and hulk out. Um, or he gets hit with gamma radiation and hulk out um, to this. Um, so he'd be wearing, you know, the darker blue with that. Um, I did hit the belt buckle with chrome. Um, the belt buckle is chromed out. Um, so that's, that's there, that's present. Um, just to give a little bit more detail to it. Um, wanted to make it as detailed as possible, um, for the customer. And I wanted him to be happy. Um, this is his review video and this is the video I'm going to post on YouTube. Um, I'll never make another one. Um, if... This took months, 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 um, because I, I do have other projects and other things to do in life. Um, things get in the way. It doesn't always work out the way you want. Um, but this is, this is the most difficult um, sculpted figure I've ever made in my entire life. And I will probably continue to make detailed projects like this, um, but I probably will never make another another thing figure ever again um so thanks for looking i appreciate you taking the time to watch the video i know it's long almost at 15 minutes uh but the uh the video um i wanted to make sure i did the actual sculpt and the figure justice by showing you all of the detail work and i wanted to make sure the customer was happy with it so thanks for checking it out feel free to comment or ask questions down below i'll be happy to answer and then again like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages, and you'll be able to see more of my work. Thanks for checking it out.